to thanks for coming to our presentation uh, integrative and inclusive teaching in support of student success for all English language learning and information literacy so uh, my name is Anne Dikema and I'm an instruction librarian and department chair at the Sherritt Library at Southern Utah University and I'm here with my colleagues uh, Marilee Carlin, she's an um, instruction design librarian at the same library, and Sylvia Kozlovska, and she's a lecturer at the American Language and Culture Center. So what we're going to do today, uh, thank you, <laughs> um, is we're going to talk a little bit about the background and project rationale and leading into the research question that's guiding our work. Um, then we're going to move into a section where we talk specifically about the aligning of the intensive English program and information literacy learning outcomes. And then we're going to reveal a um, draft kind of instructional module that we are designing as part of this project. And then there's time for some questions. Um, before we start out, I want to just explain some terminology. So ELL is an English language learner. IL is information literacy. IEP is the intensive English program at the American Language and Culture Center here at SUU. And TESOL and TESOL is teaching English as a second language or teaching English to students of other languages. All right, so let's get into the background. So um, SUU, has a growing, we have a slight COVID dip, but we have a growing uh, and very diverse international student body that currently makes up about 5.2% of all our students. And a subset of these students take classes at the American Language and Culture so Center. Do we pick you up? Here is Sylvia. To, um, no, to attend the intensive English program. So they attend that program to prepare themselves academically uh, for uh, to matriculate into other programs at SUU. So here you can, uh, next slide please, you can see um, how diverse this population is. We have people from 67 countries and territories. So um, the rationale for our integration came from another project that we've done where um, the, we integrated information literacy directly into uh, the English intermediate writing classes. And that has caused the um, failure rates and the dropout rates to go down substantially. And even better, when you look at the, the dropout rates used to be very high for both classes. And when you look closely at these dropout rates, it's uh, specific specifically first year or first generation students or under students that from underrepresented groups that fail. So by integrating these two classes into one, the failure rates have dropped and the success rates, academic success of those particular groups that sometimes struggle academically um, is, has gone up substantially. So we wanted to replicate that in the case of um, these English language learners because they face um, obviously linguistic, but also cultural difficulties when they are using the library and performing research, which um, hampers their academic success. Um, now librarians, of course, have very limited training um, working with English language learners and the um, intensive English, English program people have limited experience with information literacy. So we decided to collaborate. And librarians, of course, have taught that population. But it's usually we show up one time as a guest lecture and then leave again. So that doesn't really allow for a, a, a really deep integration to help with student success. So how are we going to do this? So um, the literature points us to many different ways that are all important. Um, and one is we need to develop an awareness of um, English language learners ability um, and also their experiences that they have and perceptions they might have when they uh, about the library. So we have just seen this population is extremely diverse. So they have a, also a very diverse um, 
range of experiences. We need to then figure out the learning needs that are related to the perceptions that ELLs have about the library and uh, develop specific experiences related to the library and library research, combining the library the librarian's experience and the uh, English language learners, um, lecturers experience in providing that. So we've done a high level planning of curricular integration and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and we also have identified strategies that we have as librarians and that uh, language uh, instructors have on their side and um, we're incorporate that into design of these modules that we're then going to test and assess. And the, the research question that is guiding us in all this work is basically how can curriculum alignment and integration of information literacy and intensive English language instruction impact student academic performance. So next I'm handing it over to my colleague Sylvia and she's gonna talk more high level about the curriculum alignment. Hi everybody, I'm Sylvia Kozlowska. I teach for the American Language and Culture Center, which is the intensive English program here at SUU. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about just our program and what we do, and, and then a little bit about our plans to integrate information literacy outcomes into our existing intensive English um, curriculum. Um, so the academic language, the American Language and Culture Center is an academic program so we focus on teaching academic English skills to students who go through our program in order to prepare them for university study. But in addition to that, um, we know from experience that these language learners need a lot more skills than just language in order to be successful. And so that's why we're revising our curriculum and integrating those other outcomes you see in the middle column, such as US academic culture, US culture, technology, information literacy, and of course, we provide continued support for students who matriculate from our program and into degree-seeking programs at SUU. Um, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of the Intensive English program. So the levels we'll be talking about today are one through six. So that is the bulk of our program. Levels one and two are students with lower proficiency. Uh, three and four are kind of mid-intermediate proficiency, and then five and six are high proficiency. So as we thought about how to integrate information literacy outcomes, we had to think about all the other language outcomes that these students are um, completing as they go through the program. Uh, and so if I can have the next slide, thank you. So here is uh, a kind of an overview of scaffolded information literacy instruction and outcomes oh. for here, so depending on uh, learner's proficiency level. The written language outcomes of all of the ones that I mentioned are most relevant to information literacy, so I put those here just for your reference so you can get an idea of what kinds of things these students are writing. So in this first low proficiency level, they're making lists, they're building sentences, learning how to construct proper sentences, and writing short messages and notes. So for these students, the most essential things to learn in terms of information literacy are just some foundational vocabulary when it comes to the library use and research, as well as some level appropriate library resources. So, so here think, you know, in terms of foundational vocabulary, library, um, librarian, research, and level appropriate resource could be something like, let's go to the library, let's see how the library is organized and let's borrow a comic book or even a children's book for these lower proficiency students. The second tier um, introduces a lot more outcomes for <laughs> information literacy. This is the tier where students start writing simple descriptive paragraphs and summaries. And they're also beginning to do some web searches, just basic web searches on familiar topics no scholarly research here yet. They learn what the library catalog is um, and they start learning more specialized vocabulary. So for example, things like, you know, paraphrasing and citations and quoting, um, even database, they get introduced to research databases in this tier. And one thing I really um, like about this tier is that we start talking about the concept of academic honesty, even though students are not actually citing scholarly research yet. 
But basically the, the focus in this tier is for students to understand that their work that they produce must be their own, even if the sources are on familiar topics and from web searches. And in the final tier, levels five and six, so these are high proficiency students, they begin writing organized essays on academic topics and um, also applying a documentation style. And so in terms of information literacy, we continue building that specialized vocabulary related to library use and research. We begin using research databases and um, doing academic research. We incorporate formal citations this time, and we talk about research synthesis and uh, the culminating kind of paper is where they have to uh, synthesize research. Um, so one other comment I have is I just want to point out language outcomes and information literacy outcomes are scaffolded throughout the tiers and they're bolstered by this personal connection with a librarian. This is something we hadn't had before, except for the one shot sessions that Anne mentioned, which were very successful, just not, not sufficient. Um, Mary Lee Carlin will tell you a little bit more about how we envision developing individual modules for the information literacy instruction. Thank you. My name is Mary Lee Carlin and I I'm going to kind of walk you through the process of how we develop the modules. Um, so to start with, we really had to kind of translate the pedagogy of TESOL into something that um, kind of into the, the pedagogy of IL instruction. So here on this graph, we have the, the six principles of exemplary language teaching. And on the outside, we have kind of our translation of that into in, to IL instruction terms. Um, so for example, um, the principle of creating conditions for language learning for IL instruction means to clearly communicate those expectations so that the students actually know what they will be learning before they start to help them both gain the information literacy knowledge and also the vocabulary and uh, language skills, skills to navigate um, that subject. Um, for design high quality lessons and language development, uh, we translated this into scaffolding the modules and also the different instruction topics for comprehensibility so that they can build off of what they know and learn the language and the concepts as they go throughout the program. We did want to make these modules very adaptable, not just for specific classes and instructors needs, but also for other um, potential users outside of the program as well, so that any professor on campus could potentially use it for a class where they have um, an international student as well. Um, and so this is we've done through adjusting the instructions accordingly and also making them adaptable for proficiency level. Um, and then through monitoring and assessing the student language development, also providing ongoing and effective feedback um, through the modules, having that module there as a resource as well after they've had the instruction to go back um, and also having the librarian as a resource um, by developing those um, relationships with the program and with the students. And so there's a lot of collaboration involved between the librarians and the TESOL fac faculty or the IEP faculty. Um, the biggest thing that we have, have learned or that we have used is to really know our learners. Um, so building off of what the students already know, finding those beliefs and former experiences, what um, a library is in their previous um, academic culture and helping them build off of that so they can kind of figure out what a librarian, a library is in US academic culture, what the library can do for them while they're here at SUU and so on. So we are designing these instructional, instructional modules with the ELLs in mind. Um, we're designing them to activate that background knowledge of what they already know about information literacy, what they already know about at research, and then using the modules to pre-teach the vocabulary so that they already have a concept of what they'll be learning and also what words we'll be using when a librarian actually comes to class and teach them um, that um, IL instruction piece. Um, the modules will be written using global English and we'll, they'll, we'll try to write them in the grade level that they are um, using or the grade level that they're at. Um, and they'll be, we'll use those scaffolding practices such as visual aids and activities 
so that they have more context as they're reading through it. Um, this is all to promote com so that cooperative learning. So the modules really are going to be a flipped classroom approach since they're not going to replace the librarian and instruction, but are going to be there as a scaffolding for when the librarians come in and also that they'll have those materials to go back to after the librarian has left as well. And so we're developing these with a lot of cooperation between the library and um, the IEP program. So I do want to kind of demo a prototype module. It's a very big um, work in progress. So it's definitely a draft, but as you can see, we are, um, we are clearly showing what we're going to talk about before by showing the objective, the course activities, so that the students know what to expect. Um, and we, we will be writing this in global English. Currently, I have put in the text or the type of information that I want to write, and it's probably way too high of a level because it's based on what I'm just, you know, dumping my own speech in. So it's probably full of too much jargon, but I will be putting it through a tool to figure out how to write it down to the correct language level. Um, this is this current module, Academic Honesty and Plagiarism. Plagiarism is for a tier two um, with the levels three and four, uh, so those mid proficiencies. Um, and so it will be written more towards that level. Um, and then we're going to build in definitions um, for any out of level um, words that are important to be used. And then we'll just embed um, definitions into it so that they can read through it faster without having to look up as much since the definitions will be there. We'll be incor incorporating even more visuals, graphics, and examples and so that they have more context into it. Um, so currently we don't have everything in here. We have a lot of gap placeholders where we'll have those images, um, but we will also have built-in activities that are interactive so that the students can really um, the students can really um, have that example and have that context. And then there will be more activities as we actually go into the classes and work in person. Um, so the next steps are to actually continue designing these instructional modules for the three tiers of the program. And that will include a lot of applied activities and assessments, both built into the modules and to be done in the classroom when we have a more face-to-face -face workshop approach. Um, and then we'll actually pilot these, um, these modules and the, the whole concept of having these learning outcomes in the IEP curriculum. And we are going to develop a way to evaluate these modules, getting feedback from the students um, and also assessments through how they do um, before, like through the modules and also after the in-class so that we can revise them so that the modules are even are the most helpful that they can be to the students. Um, and then we will have a, an assessment for the entire program so that we can um, get feedback and results about how um, this integration has worked. So that is kind of where we are at this point. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen to us. Um, do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions for our presenters? I think everybody has hit a wall. <laughs> All right, then uh, we're done. Thanks for coming. <laughs>